Hi everyone, my name is Erin Sukera, an application engineer here at 3M. Today we're going to talk about some ways that you can both prepare and store your two-part cartridges to make sure that you can avoid uncured seam sealer or adhesives. Let's get started! When completing a repair that has to do with adhesives or seam sealers, it's first important to make sure that you're checking the OEM repair procedure for your designated repair. You can assume that all repairs are created equal or use the same materials. A common misconception with some of our adhesives is that they all can do the same job in a repair, but actually we have specific procedures um, in which the OEMs have specified one of our adhesives, but maybe not all of them. There's a good handful of OEMs that tend to call out both our impact resistant structural adhesive and our panel bonding adhesive for different repairs. So it's important not to think that they're interchangeable. Even our two panel bonding adhesives have their own specific times in an OEM's procedure that they are called out for, so they can't necessarily be used interchangeably either. Additionally, seam sealers, although seen as a maybe more cosmetic part of the repair process, they also have started to gain a lot of traction in the OEMs wanting to have a say in what seam sealers are used on the repair. So it's really important in all of these repairs that you're paying attention to what material should actually be used for that procedure. So make sure that you're checking out whether it's the OEM's um, information sites themselves or OEM One Stop and ICAR can also be a great place to start if you're unsure where to find that information. So with that in mind and keeping that in mind throughout your repair, let's talk about what might happen some of the things you need to think about along the way to make sure that your seam sealers and adhesives are curing properly. The first thing is to make sure that you're equalizing your cartridge. So these two part chemistries rely on the reaction of both sides, uh, the part A and part B of the material to cure properly. And luckily we have chemists in a lab like 3M that do the work for you to decide what the proper ratio is and what the proper mix nozzle is so that the material can cure properly. So, in order to make sure that it's working properly, we need to make sure that we're equalizing the cartridge before we dispense. Let me show you what that looks like. So, I have with me here a cartridge in which when I open it, you can actually see that there's a bit of material that is cured at the top of this cartridge. So this could have been a result of the last time that it was stored or material being pushed in from the part A to the part B side of the cartridge. So now that I've placed this in my applicator, I can pull the trigger and dispense this lightly into this paper towel, making sure to keep it upright as I do this, especially when dealing with less viscous or more flowable material, this will save you a big mess. So making sure that you're dispensing enough out so you can remove that chunk of cured material and also make sure that you're dispensing equal part A and part B into this paper towel. So now our material is properly equalized and I'm confident that the material that will be running through the mixing nozzle um, is set up in the right way. Now let's talk about the nozzle choice. So this is another uh, common step that people might miss or not pay attention to as they're preparing the cartridge. Our 3M uh, static mixing nozzle of choice, you get two of these every time you purchase uh, a 3M adhesive or seam sealer, is known as this gold static mixing nozzle. Our chemists who developed this in the lab specifically chose this nozzle because they've tested it that it works best with our adhesives and seam sealers. You may think that all nozzles are created equal, but I have here too even an example of two different mixing ladders that you might find in some common nozzles in your shop. You can see that the mixing elements are designed a specific way. In addition to some nozzles may be longer than others, and each additional mixing element along the way adds something to that mixing process. So it's important to trust that you're using the right nozzle for the right adhesive or seam sealer so that it can perform as designed. A great indication about how the nozzle makes a difference and how we're not actually wasting material by letting it properly mix through the nozzle 
is in our impact resistant structural adhesive. So those of you who are familiar with this product know that it has a color changing attribute to it. So it starts silver when it is mixed and, and uh, dispensed and then it turns purple throughout the curing process. So when you look closely at this nozzle, you can see exactly where the material starts to become thoroughly mixed because that's where it turned purple. That's where the curing mechanism um, really came into play. So this is just a great visual representation of how it takes a little bit. It takes many mixing elements in this nozzle to get the material properly mixed. We're not purposely trying to waste your material. We're trying to make sure that it's a thoroughly mixed material. So now our cartridge is equalized and we have the proper nozzle attached to our cartridge. It's important now that we dispense through the nozzle before applying to the vehicle. So dispense a few inches or a few centimeters onto your mixing board prior to your application onto the vehicle. This helps ensure that we have proper mix within the nozzle and it also helps ensure that you purge out those uh, you know, first little bit of material that ends up in the nozzle so that we know that what ends up on the vehicle is thoroughly mixed and won't have any issues with being uncured. So with keeping these two steps in mind, first of equalizing your cartridge before ever use, and second in making sure that you're using the correct mixing nozzle for the correct product, you're ensuring that you're giving the product the best chance of reacting properly and curing every time. A nice bonus to this is since I've dispensed out some material on my mixing board, I can keep this on the side during my repair, uh, make sure that it's curing properly, that it's reaching its tack time. This specific product has a tack time around six minutes. So I should be checking that and that'll help me ensure that the material on the vehicle is also curing the same way. So it's a great indication for that as well. Now that I'm done using this product, one more thing that I can keep in mind to uh, help myself for the next time is the storage of the product. Our two-part products can be stored with the same static mixing nozzle that you last dispensed with. The material inside this nozzle will cure and it will create a cap or a seal on the material so that it limits the amount of material that might cure at the top of the cartridge. I would still uh, suggest that you equalize every time you open this cartridge just to be safe and make sure that you have the right material flowing out of it, but this will put you on the right track. I hope that this content sets you up well for the next time you go to reach for a two-part seam sealer or adhesive in your repair. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss our next video. If you have questions or have ideas for future topics, leave us a comment down below. If you want more content like this, be sure to check us out at the 3M Collision Repair Academy. The link for that is in the description below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.